Hi guys, my name is Borodante and welcome back to Overpaint, which means I'll go through my Patreon page and work on 9 submissions that you guys sent me in March and I'll try to improve them as much as I can while give you all kinds of advice. After a quick word about this channel's sponsor Wingfox and their new course called Stylized Background for Animation and 3D Projection. This is a really powerful course from a very talented and highly professional artist, Jose Vega. He has 8 years of experience in the industry and this course he made is focused on using 3D scenes with as little of actual 3D work as possible to achieve a final very artsy looking painting as a result. So he has a lot of tools, a lot of tricks about how to use simple shapes, particles and all kinds of tricks like that to achieve exactly what you need to get the perfect geometry, amazing style and amazing lighting that Blender, the free 3D software that everyone's using, can give you. So that's a really amazing look with a lot of tricks with the water and everything. It's an incredible course. So if you're interested in learning 3D, especially in applying it for working as an illustrator and not just a hardcore 3D modeler or something, this course is amazing exactly for that. So yeah, if you're interested, this course initially costs $140 but you can get access to it before it's fully released for $79. The affiliate link as always is in the description. Now let's move on with Overpain. First patient, Tyler Cheron. Hi Tyler. Hey Brodante, I've been following you for a while and really enjoy your videos and how you explain things. Thank you, I'm trying my best. And you're trying to get more digital painting work and would love to grow more in that field. Here is a painting I made of my vector logo, which was also made by me. I find myself getting lost in details sometimes and then also lose track of time. I tend to rush through some parts I find boring and spend more time on others I find interesting. Any tips changes would be greatly appreciated, bud. Alright, let's see what I can do. Or did. Surprise flashback. Alright, so overall I gotta say, I like the image quite a lot. It's actually a pretty great like um, badge rendering or something, a logo rendering. But two things I find the weakest, if we don't go into uh, any more specific things, is just the design of these uh, feet right here. Let's use white. So they have this issue of being very like similar and with almost identical spaces between them. This is like the, the central place of your logo right here. So that, that came from the logo, not just this rendering. And it's like a very unpleasant thing. So it sort of compromises the whole logo with this issue. So I'm gonna search for how to maybe change that, reposition things a bit. So this is the issue number one, like the main one. Number two is generally the way you made the green skin in, in, the, in the render. Uh, in the original logo it wasn't a problem because there was just flat colors and that's it. So what I'm gonna do here, and this is maybe exactly what you mentioned as the boring parts that you tend to skip on and then moving on with uh, what you find more interesting. Uh, same goes for, for the white belly in here. These parts you apparently chose like textures and you were stretching it, trying to save time to like get rid of it faster. I think instead of that, I will look up more references, but it's a common thing that I notice the more I get experience in creating paintings, the more I realize whenever I feel bored about any part of the image, the mistake is uh, the way I decided to make that part. It just should be looking more interesting. And the third issue that's connected to why this looks kind of boring. So first of all, I'll look for specific designs of reptile skin for this kind of uh, head and everything. But another thing is the lighting. So my favorite subject here, right? I would approach this particular logo. It could be either like soft light from the top, like the overcast lighting, the, the basic one that I always talk about. Or it could be this type of lighting where we have the 
soft main light shooting from a bit of an angle like this. Uh, in our case, for for your logo, it will probably be uh, mirrored like this. And then we have this darker side and the rim light from the back highlights the silhouette of the character. So we never lose the silhouette. Generally, the background that you have is pretty dark and I'll probably keep it like that. But I will make sure that the lighting will look more like the studio lighting type where we have the lighting sandwich. A really soft light from this direction, like from, from the front, like that. And a smaller, sharper, but maybe pretty bright light from over there. And this will introduce, uh, first of all, we have a very specific decision on the lighting, which is something I think is not exactly present in this rendering. Like there's mostly highlights I can see on the on the somewhat uh, really wet skin of this reptile. But like I can see highlights from this side, from this side, you know, it's like everywhere. And generally the lighting is kind of like just ambient lighting. So in here we have this ambient occlusion like shadow, the contact shadow. But in here it's like not present. And on this side, this is like maybe one of the most boring parts that you uh, called them boring because it's it's just uneventful it doesn't really show the geometry and it probably just doesn't look good enough for you that's why you don't like it as well it's not just boring it just feels wrong so I'm gonna make sure I analyze the um, geometry of this head much more uh, according to the lighting that I decided on so it will be applied for everything and we'll have a stronger more interesting contrast for uh, all the shadows and everything so geometry will be showed with a much more interesting contrast and I think that will be a huge improvement in terms of just making everything look a lot more interesting so these are my main thoughts also a couple of things on the leaf like uh, th this kind of veins on the leaf they as far as I know only happen on the inside of the leaf so on, on that side over there on the front side it would be kind of like the opposite so just uh, these indents in a way it's, it's like folding in a little bit on the leaf yeah, these are my thoughts. Uh, another thing about just the shape design, somewhat close to the feet right here, is how all these drops, they really like repeating each other again, equal distances for the same drops and they all end the same length. It's really a good idea to just make like this, like only one drop being the longest. So something like this and maybe even make it like even longer. So maybe this design and trying to balance it out to make sure it looks uh, actually satisfying as much as possible. Maybe the green leaf should have the the longest uh, drop because it's like a small detail we can actually extend it and that way it will be more satisfying and it's like closer to the center so overall it will make the image a bit more centered also because the the pencil is pointing downwards here uh, we can balance it out with this not exactly the completely on the right kind of drop but like almost in the center but a bit on the right and this is the why I'm choosing this drop this is like the the balance game for a composition. So yeah, these are my plans. This is what I'm uh, gonna try and do. And yeah, we'll see what happens next. So yeah, this was the changes I did in the end. It was a lot of fun. If I would be able to spend like all kinds of time on it uh, to actually finalize it the way I did with um, Possessed Basketball or maybe a bit better than that, it would look really awesome. One thing I really liked is that by defining this uh, more specific geometry and proper values, like more precise values, really thinking through how the light would go, I got to just focus my work with future details on just few little places, like the highlight, you can show a lot of these specific bumps showing through. It's like the number one priority detail in terms of how much effort you need to put in it, how much precision, because it's the highest contrast. And then of course, all the terminators, they need to show almost the same level of priority. And everything else, if somewhere on just the flat areas, you also feel like it could use some of that, just add some bumps. Trust me, after working through the terminators and the highlights, it will be almost 
almost everything you need. So that's how it's actually really awesome to work with proper values and specific consistent light sources that you think through and just work with those. It eliminates an issue of something being boring because all the details like all the planes they constantly change their angles so the lighting is playing around in all kinds of ways it's never gonna be that boring and yeah uh, the design choices on the drops are improved the water drop in here looking kind of fun yeah I think it turned out pretty well next patient ball the destroyer Hi, Ball. Hey, Barodante. I have been watching your videos for years and I have learned a ton about color theory, so thank you. You're welcome and thank you. As you can see, this composition is huge, but I feel like the sea monster is just not lit correctly and I don't know how to fix it. Help. I'm also not excited about the shadow he cast either. Any other pointers would be wonderful. Just for reference, the setting is another world at night. The girl is a dark-skinned elf and the sea monster's skin should be slightly translucent. Now let's see how I managed to work with that amount of detail. Well, first of all, I was blown away by the size of this image. Right now I made it 6000 pixels wide and it used to be like 16,000 I think. That seems a bit crazy, but I mean maybe if we're printing on a giant wall or something it would make sense. But also it kind of highlights the problem of overall the image being really overly detailed without the proper work on lighting and um, better interpretation of geometry with, uh, with the way you render image, uh, with the way the lighting goes. Certain things like for instance uh, whenever a tree is curving inwards so we have this geometry right here again white color it would go sort of like this and since the moon is the light source i would assume the terminators would happen somewhere around here so pretty much this area would be almost completely black and it would be totally fine to start with that. That would segregate the whole image into the light and shadow areas and would introduce a lot more interesting opportunities for shading. For instance, like in here, if we would truly go with this dark tree, we then would be able to actually truly focus on the lighting of this tree from the other side with the color of the hairstyle of uh, our elf girl. So that would be really cool and generally the whole lighting of the girl in here is coming like from this side from this side and I think it would be actually much more cooler to just light up this whole area with the light from the fiery hair it would be very appropriate since the hair seems really bright. That That's a lot of effect going on right there. And yeah, in terms of just, you know, building the the lighting of this hair, it, it feels a bit off how there's a lot of fiery details going on, but none of them truly combine into a single bright area. And that kind of happens all over the image. Many things, they're just incredibly tiny, precise, details but they don't really talk to each other as in uh, just the shading of the grass in so many cases in here it would make much more sense to make it darker and in the case of the hair it would have like a brighter center maybe and have like a more of a fiery crown with some kind of transition uh, of sorts that would look more like a fire at least I understand it as fire I'm not sure maybe some kind of other effect was in mind but nonetheless if it's a bright magic effect of any kind it would have to still you know work with the idea of being really bright and that bright light would have to you know accumulate in the center more and whenever it's thinning out it would get darker with um, the basic gradient of being really bright and then getting darker through yellow 
like I literally do this probably through yellow and really bright and getting darker and getting closer and closer to red like this and going further with that more and more and then just going away into complete darkness with this so this is the basic gradient whenever you paint something with a really pale light strokes they need to have this crown of the gradient because no matter how thin the detail is it's still like on its very edges it will have this thinning through its nature of being actually the uh, orange fiery glow it would still thin out with these colors on its edges all the time it, it's never appropriate to just paint with a uh, thin white lines and not work on their edges like this so i would fade it out like this maybe on the tips and you see now it looks like an appropriate fire kind of thing yeah this over just uh you know doing this this doesn't look like any kind of flamey effect so these are my basic thoughts. The main issue that I see in here is just the fact that this is a night scene with the rim lighting from the moon and you just can't embrace the actual shadow, actual darkness of the surfaces. You said you had a lot of problems with the lighting of this monster. Well, from the front, there is no moon. That means there's zero justification for so much light on the frontal plane of the monster. So all of this gets much darker at first. So we build this image like this. It needs to be dark from the front and the face as well. And while you think, oh, I really wanted to work on that creature, you know, on that face. But did you? Because you chose the scene where the light is coming from the back. This is a perfect situation for a really cool, intimidating, like scary scene where the monster is like, we can see their really huge and scary silhouette and pretty much the whole face is in the dark. It's a lot more mysterious and, and scary and everything. And of course, on top of that, we can just keep the eyes glowing. He kind of looks like Lenny from The Simpsons right now, but a really scary one. So yeah, this way this character will just stand out a lot. And you mentioned you wanted to show the translucent skin. Uh, I wonder if this incredibly lit rendering of the whole character, even from the front, is somehow the uh, way to show this translucency. But you see, the this character is pretty big. And to be that translucent, it's, um, I don't know, he's pretty much gonna be falling apart because he will be just 99.9. 99% water or something because even if he's made of wax he wouldn't be that translucent even a giant candle at the scale wouldn't be that translucent so where the translucency is truly showing through right now if uh, like we go more physically appropriate and I think much better for the scene it's exactly on the edge where we go from the lit part to the dark part. Right now I define this edge, but then I'll go ahead and add, hmm, what color would they be actually translucent with? I don't know, like a bit of a greenish color like this. Yeah, something like that. And this is where I show that translucency. And it needs to be careful and like tasteful, I guess, but whatever that means, if you, you know, don't know how to uh, properly create that gradient or something, right? Well, um, look up some stuff with the translucent materials and whatever, and you will uh, find that more of an appropriate way to do it. You see right now, the translucency really starts to show through, even though I'm doing a very quick job here in terms of actually defining that well. The, the gradient should be really tiny, don't do it too big because it feels really weird, like inappropriate. If you show them more like this, I think it's a better deal. And then you can just work a little bit with some hints of maybe some reflected light from the yellow thing right here, right? So I'll light up the character with a very dim color like that. that that's not dim, not even close. Yeah, like this, and it will show just a little hint. And with that hint, we can define a lot of interesting details while still keeping some kind of a mystery. Where 
wherever we want to. The darkness is important. You need to use it and not like completely avoid it everywhere. This is not the way things work. This is not the way physics of the light work or the way the dramatic effect would work. You know, it only works against that if you try to eliminate all the shadows. Generally, in this scene, it makes sense to have just a lot of black objects and the the shirt that the girl left in here will also be much, much darker like this. So everything will become much darker and only the rim lighting will actually happen. So a, a much stronger, like, don't be afraid to keep a pretty solid part of objects just almost completely black, you know? It's fine. We have just the moon from the back. That's a very limited lighting and it's just this beautiful scene that can really shine well. This thing in the back, you worked so much on the details for this boat, where in reality it should be a very distinct silhouette of the boat and only a little bit of the details seen on that lit side. And yeah, the water gets a lot darker. When you're at night, what the water doesn't glow like that. A lot of its surface is just black as well, so things get a lot darker. But I mean, we can use some kind of a special color of water if this is a different world and everything. So, of course, but generally solid objects lit from the back. It will look a lot more like the actual night scene and everything. There's so much benefit to actually go ahead and try to embrace this uh, dark silhouette and contrary to that another like lighting up way for the whole situation is the rim lighting introduces a lot of the shining like uh, the Fresnel effect creates this reflection of the moon not just the lit surface it actually reflects the light from the moon towards us like this it's flying that that ray of light towards us and with that reflection, it's gonna happen a lot and you will have these beautiful, mysterious shapes of the trees while they're shining on their edges and it's looking really cool. So a lot more of that applied to everything. The only thing is grass is uh, really, it's almost like supposed to be a work with um, silhouettes and everything, but I would start with just a black base or like really dark base, darker maybe even. And then I would start adding on top the details where some of the grass stems would be catching the light from the moon because they stand out from the rest of the mass from, of all of the this grass that's casting the shadow on everything that's going behind them you know it's just the tips that we actually see a lot but the overall the base should be this darker color so yeah this is the idea behind it this is an enormous image and i think it could use a lot more of your tremendous amount of work and effort and you truly love painting but i think you need to spend that love on actually parts that matter and defining proper lighting is a perfect base to spread your detail in proper areas. So in the end I decided to start over. I created a quick sketch using filters from the original artwork and just started coloring it from scratch. And this is the result I got. I'm not a huge fan of it, I just wanted to show an example of how the lighting would work if you would start from actually embracing the darkness. But I think the darkness consumed me a bit too much because I think I should have added a bit more brightness on the landscape in the back. After all, this huge moon could really light up the atmosphere and the aerial perspective a bit more. For our purposes, it would bring the whole picture together. And in this case, it's really just separate spots in the black space. So I think a better approach would be to mostly work with what it is, but like introduce the changes that I've been talking about, about actually showing all the frontal planes of objects being actually black or really close to that. And yeah, some of the stuff like this area is looking very interesting. So uh, the dark side of this tree with the girl hiding and everything with her mysterious friend. It's really looking great. I think it should have been looking more like this, contrary to this casual lighting. Next, patient. Graphico Illustration Sculpt Dot Photography. Hi, Graphico Illustration. 
Hey Boro, been looking and learning from your overpain videos, so I decided to submit my own works. Truth be told, I've been trying to turn into a full-time illustrator, failing miserably in the process. LOL. I think one of my main problems is feeling that the characters do not blend totally with the background. So Graphicoi had two submissions, uh, this artwork and then this one. Well, generally they have similar skill level or whatever, they have uh, similar approaches. I really wanted to focus on this first artwork because of the angle on the face. I just, when I saw it, I couldn't think about anything else. So let's see how that turned out. I think this case is pretty complex because this is one of the worst angles possible to paint a character from. Starting from the never-ending issues with the face, it's really hard, like, you probably try to do it yourself, sort of, like, without actually using the references of a face seen from the bottom. And it always seems like it's something possible to do without truly studying this angle for a while, but really, all we can do as humans is pretty much draw the face from the front and then try to separately turn certain planes upwards a little bit but really these eyes aren't really looking at us from the top or this chin is just the face seen from the front and the forehead like the whole top half of the head is simply just a head seen from the front this is a normal this is a normal height of a forehead seen from the front and if we would be seeing it from the bottom, it would be a lot more distorted. We wouldn't see all of this hair, that's for sure. With all that said, this is what I managed to do with it. <laughs> I really decided to give it a try before I started recording because I'm terrified of this angle. It's always a lot of problems, but pretty much I could go ahead and use some kind of reference and do that, you know, to make a good result. But the point is I was trying to find some kind of set of rules that would help you. I don't know. Either like truly build the shape with all the proper academic things, you know, of really rotating everything. The the biggest issue with this whole situation is that drawing angles, like proper angles, is not that hard. What's hard is the foreshortening, making sure that when you rotate all these angles, you would actually make the distances smaller. So the forehead becomes a lot smaller and then we would just see the hair sticking from the front and eyes would be in dent. There's a lot to truly understand about the shape of the head to be able to do it. And yeah, I simply can't really <laughs> pull it off. Well, I'll give it another try, but I doubt I would actually be able to do it correctly. So the point with the chin, with the neck, if the head from a side would be looking kind of like that. So this is the ear and this is how the chin goes. Pretty much the bottom of the chin would look sort of like this. I pretty much drew a man, I guess, but... So think about it this way, when you draw a chin that looks like this, this is a line, we can see this line, right? The chin line. That's pretty much our eye being over here, and we're seeing the head like this, right? And this is this line of the chin, because we're seeing it from this angle, there's this going on. But right now, in this scene, we're looking at the face from like this angle, presumably, or something close to it. And it would be just this geometry and I don't know, I can show it to you a million times with all kinds of structures and everything, but just out of my head without a lot of practice and drawing this angle, I just, I have no idea. I think the main problem of mine right now that I'm having here is that I'm trying to shade the, like, this step without considering that it's also the curvature of the neck and the curvature of the face that needs to shade away like that much more so I don't do that and the neck becomes just flat. So yeah, if I round it up like this, it seems to start looking a bit better, but I know it's still a complete failure, that's for sure. Also, with the nose, it's really important, well, you kind of did that, like, not only making this plane much bigger, the bottom of the nose, this 
upper part of the nose. It needs to be much, much shorter to the point that you can see at this angle, it's almost completely gone, actually. There's barely any distance going on at all. So it may make sense to even somehow make it even stronger. But what would that mean? Really? I don't want to like make this distance bigger. This should probably be actually even shorter anyway. But yeah, th if when you just start <laughs> dissecting and moving things around, man, this is this is rarely ends well with like a face. It's just so weird right now. And really, when it comes to shading at a very strong angle, a lot of the familiar details that we really want to show, you know, we really want to still work with those, they actually supposed to turn into like a line almost or something. And that stuff is so hard to just, you know, come up with. This is so weird. She almost looks like a dog already. And that's because while I'm trying to make sense out of this whole idea, still the overall face, there's something wrong with it on a much more fundamental level. Maybe if I would just build it truly, that would work better. So anyway, the point is, I can't think about anything else on this artwork except for the face. So I'll just go ahead and do my best at just reconstructing it maybe like this. And that's gonna be what what this process is about, I guess. I know, it seems to be getting only worse as I'm just trying to paint over. I think it's like the whole idea of just painting over into fixing the geometry of a face at a complex angle is just doomed to fail. So I need to just reconstruct it from scratch. I really love the bottom part. It almost feels like it's painted using a specific reference because it looks really good. The only thing is, I don't know, maybe this reference was from a different environment. I feel like the top of the knee right here, it would make sense to introduce more of the Fresnel reflection there because it's weird. It's a strong angle angle that's facing the sky, although it's kind of dark, I don't know. Still, like, it's where the whole lighting of the scene is coming from. It should reflect much more. Like, you see, I'm adding this, this highlight, sort of, highlight of a strong angle. It's like a thing. There's this Fresnel, my favorite thing to add to any rendering. At strong angles like that, especially like we have this long part of the leg and it's so foreshortened, it's like literally like this at us. At such a strong angle, we're foreshortening a huge amount of surface in here. This is a very strong angle, much stronger than that. And because of that, this leather or whatever the material it would be, not necessarily even, it doesn't have to be like leather, it will be reflecting that sky so much. Oh yeah, now it looks kind of weird where it's like nothing's going on there. Like it should also happen in other places for it to fit in better, but it's definitely something to do here. So in the end, after all my experiments and trying to build the new head, I think I did a decent job, but it it's not exactly perfect. First of all, the face is completely different. But I was going from the standpoint of like this face being just its particular features are more of a result of mistakes of trying to rotate the face upwards. That's why the nose is turned upwards and with a very short upper part. So while the whole face almost completely looks like it's facing exactly towards us, the nose is facing upwards and the eyes are also kind of rotated like that. So I wasn't really focused all that much on the features of the face or anything and just decided to do whatever I felt like uh, was appropriate. Since I sort of managed to get the feeling of actually having the head turned upwards to an extent, I went with more of a like intimidating or dominant facial expression. The hardest part is still like the bottom area right here. It's really hard to not just show the curvature of the chin, but the curvature of the neck. The fact that it's also while being rotated like that, it should also like curve away on the sides. Without thinking about that, it really looks like the face becomes really thick and like wide at the bottom. I tried to fix it several times. It's not perfect still, like it's uh, it's looking kind of weird in here. But yeah, I did my best with uh, whatever was there. I couldn't think about anything else before I did the face, so I had to do it. 
And yeah, a couple of changes on the shading here and there, and mostly on the muscles of the arm. I really changed the anatomy of those. And I was only using my memory, so it's not perfect, but I think it turned out at least looking as an improvement, you know? And yeah, aside from that, I changed the gradient of the sky. It's really sharp and weird, and like specifically darkening at the edge of the canvas. While we're sort of looking at the top, such sharp gradients don't happen at the top maybe next to the horizon, but not at the top. So I flattened it out quite a lot and made it a lot brighter since our exposure is adjusted to see the hero. The sky should look much brighter. Otherwise, this should have been much darker. Yeah, some aerial perspective to show like there's probably a lot of like uh, water particles going on next to the waterfall. So it makes sense to do that. And yeah, some shading on the tree trunk at the bottom as well to show some of the geometry in there as well. I think it turned out pretty cool while the face is still kind of weird. Next patient. Cameron Hazer. Hello, Cameron. Greetings, Boro. I finished this piece a few weeks ago after having watched a good amount of your videos and others online. I wanted to work on lighting as well as getting a good sense of depth. I had the most trouble to get the water look at least somewhat right, as the reflections inside and outside the cavern would be different, not to mention the color variations. I think my favorite part of painting this was discovering the shape of the cavern scene Ceiling. The way the reflected lighting turned out was very satisfying. Yeah, that's pretty cool. When reflected lighting works, it's fun. If you were to go back and try to improve it, my first thought would be to add suspended oil lanterns to the boats so that I would get another point of interest in the front boat. What are your thoughts? Well, let's find out, shall we? All right, so you mentioned that maybe you want to work more with the reflection on the water. So I'll be doing that. But first, the main thing that I would like to improve to work on is uh, this area right here. These characters, they're really invisible, pretty much just a very few hints, a bit too little, you know, it looks uh, like they're almost just marked in. They're not really in the in the story or something. So the way I would approach it, I would go ahead and try to maybe extend this volumetric a bit further or maybe make it so at the bottom there's just more like of a some kind of a dense like fog or some kind of particles in here that are lit up a bit by this light further in the back and it would highlight the silhouettes of the characters so yeah I can't see anything that way so let's just select the characters so I selected the characters and I have this mask for a blank layer and now I'll just go ahead and I don't know probably in screen mode I'll do some kind of uh, search on that so this is a great way but you guys saw me doing this quite a lot I think on this channel and while this is a great way to do it and we can really tweak in terms of how much we want it even like this this is already truly a part of the composition now you know and it can work I think much more because before it felt like well just too much of black it feels like the image is falling apart it's not the way you show something especially the fact that it's like pretty close to the center of the composition so it needs to be uh, like present and this is one way to do it another way as you said would be to add a hanging lantern um let's say it's literally a stick connected to the boat i assume it wouldn't be all that tech savvy in terms of how it's implemented usually I remember I did something really close to this in my old painting that was the very first paint through on this channel. So this painting called The Lake of Ghosts involved the lantern and everything. So yeah, a great way to introduce lighting when you're in this kind of situation. A lighting on the boat, obviously. I'm not quite sure how exactly it would fight sunlight in this case though, so that, that's a bit of a question to search. I would probably not make it too bright, like I won't be going for the white center, like this is a 
about it simply because our exposure is adjusted to this part so the lantern thing wouldn't be that bright and yeah simply from here you just go ahead and start shading everything pretty much almost in the shades of this flamey color but with some exceptions. I don't know, I made this a lot of this character like this. They look like they're in a super warm winter outfit with a massive hat and everything. I think it was something else initially, but I literally couldn't see the rest of the outline there. I guess it was some kind of hat like that, but now it's a winter outfit. And yeah, uh, I'll do two more things in here. I'll work on the reflection of the water. One thing I would start with is I would go with a bit of a more specific reflection from the sky area. I can see you added it in here, but it would be a bit more specifically, you know, like the way it happened here, almost the same way in here. So really where there is sky on top of the water, we shouldn't switch to a darker reflection. There's little sense to it. Like in here, exactly at the edge of this cavern, there's no justification to just switch immediately to a darker reflection, because reflection is just shooting there forward. It doesn't care what's happening exactly immediately around that spot. So yeah, it just keeps traveling forward and getting darker in here, because from here it can be shooting on the walls that are already ahead of us when we're getting reflected from that part. So that makes sense. And yeah, these stones, they're supposed to be a lot darker than whatever's going on with the actual sky. Mostly we're seeing them from the other side. So we would see a somewhat noticeable reflection of the actual edge of the cavern. Like this part would be reflected below. And like this, a little bit the colors of the stone when they get bright enough to actually get reflected. And less and less as we go further away from it. And here, this should be darker, I think, already. So something like this for the reflections. And one more thing I wanted to mention is whenever you paint uh, this kind of massive wooden objects, really at big angles, all of these surfaces, they get pretty reflective on ships and everything. So I would go ahead and go with this kind of rendering for it. So this is a dark side, like not the sun side, by the, but the opposite. Not the sun side, but the opposite. So the reflections get dominant in terms of brightness. Like this seems like a bit of a more appropriate color, not to mention also some aerial perspective. You kind of made it work a bit at the top, but that's just the volumetric. Really, these things are really too saturated for that distance. I'll just literally cut out the characters in front of all of that and tone things down quite a bit. Now that makes a lot more sense, I think. So yeah, I guess this composition is pretty, you know, well thought through in terms of the decisions were made to make the this picture, you know, as fitting for the skill level or whatever as possible. So the result of that is actually a really nice artwork that doesn't require all that much of fixing or whatever. Everything is just looking natural and pretty well put together. One thing that I'm uh, fixing here is that specifically the very terminators of the stones can be used as a good place for introducing some extra detail with very little cost. So just at the terminators, you can truly show a lot of these little bits or anything and immediately the whole thing starts having a certain touch to it. Much better than these quick strokes that were really smooth and fast. But uh, like it's the way exactly you do it, it's up to you. I'm just showing that literally just getting in there and showing some of that brushwork right on the uh, terminators is a really good idea. All right, so the changes in the end were looking like this. I pretty much, I didn't do the time lapse afterwards because the picture was pretty much perfect. I didn't want to spend an hour detailing the waves on water, but yeah, the main takeaway out of this, it wasn't exactly necessary to add the lantern right here. You could just use the aerial perspective. I think it's possible to have it in here like this and it will really show the characters pretty well. And another thing is reflections don't exactly quickly change when they just get inside 
side of the tavern, because reflections, they don't care about anything immediately next to the reflecting surface, because it's at this angle it's shooting at the horizon, and that's the only thing that matters. The next patient is Phantom. Hi, Phantom. Hello, Barodante. This is one of my latest drawings of Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. I started off with black and white, as I am still working on my values. I knew I wanted to draw Materia, the balls. But I didn't think ahead when it came to starting off in black and white. Once I got to the balls, I immediately colored them and didn't use black and white. So it might be obvious and not unified. I don't think it's a problem. These are the magic balls, they're glowing, they may be special and I think anyone would start them in color right away. But my main concern is the lighting, and if you know how to make the whole thing look more unified, that would be great. I used the reference for the lighting and tried to stick with a simple, cool, complementary color palette, but I feel like it could be better. His skin looks too plasticky, I feel, and I'm a bit lost with where the light hits his abs. Lastly, I tried to add in reflective light to make it less flat or muddy, but perhaps I can use some help there as well. Well, let's see what I managed to change with this one. I actually like this picture quite a lot. Probably because it's like mostly from the reference, I think a lot of uh, anatomy and angles and many other decisions were just uh, studied from a reference. So one thing I would change would probably be like in terms of brushwork or something. Also, you mentioned you had an issue with the rendering of the skin, that it looks really plasticky and muddy. And also you had a problem with rendering lighting on the abs and generally like probably in this area. So let's go ahead and see how I can fix those values, but the overall idea is not everything needs to hit that bright light. You know, if the object is sticking out just a little bit, maybe it will barely get anything. Sometimes, like, you don't have to go for this color or even this, like, it may be really dark, and that's fine. And also, the overall torso is rotating now, so things will get brighter here. And these soft shadows, they don't really make a lot of sense in here, so... Because, like, this... The shadow would be cast by the boob, and the boob is like right here. And no matter how soft the light source is, while it's not exactly huge, it wouldn't cast such a such a soft shadow at such a short distance. It's much more likely for it to actually not really have any kind of cast shadow in there. So literally, after the curve of a boob ended, you switch to the plane of the torso itself. And it's gonna be like a sharp edge like this with whatever ribs maybe uh, adding some uh, rib muscles, that's how I call them. And yeah, you can't have too much, you know, specific details of anatomy, that's something you just learn with time with the other anatomy references, not just game references. I certainly need more of the real references in my life as well, obviously, but you know, one day at a time. And in here, as I mentioned, the curvature overall of the whole torso, that means this further boob, it generally won't get as bright as this thing, it's like too close. I would go with uh, like noticeably darker color for it. And then since the overall nature of the shape would be sort of flat, it's gonna be more like this, slit almost like a plate. Well, a little bit rounded, but mostly it's like just from a side and then it's getting that darker shading right away. And you see, this is immediately feeling much more like a legit curvature of that shape. I think this was like the main thing that felt a bit weird with this really soft, smooth digital brush. And well, now he looks like he was hit by a car, but you know, with a more accurate brushwork, lower flow on the brush maybe, you get a bit more careful details going on. And yeah, that's the point. Uh, same stuff with the overall curvature and everything should be applied with the face. I think this plane should be brighter same as the plane of this part, a 
uh, this curvature of lighting, like there's no wobble like that going on on the face for that kind of shadow to happen. Since the light source is like right here, it won't be that darkening in there. So I would go with a bit of a softer situation. And yeah, keep going from there. And yeah, the only other thing I would probably like argue about a bit is just the brushwork on the hair. It's really, really ghosty. But I guess this character kind of had that in the game, but still it kind of looks weird, you know. <laughs> so here we are. These are the changes I did. Pretty much I worked a lot on the values on the torso, just defining much more precise specific shapes on the chest and on all the muscles and generally taking in consideration the curvature of the torso altogether. That really changed the picture a lot, uh, same as I did a lot of improvement on the gradients on the face with uh, also thinking through the values and everything. And generally I kind of forgot about the whole muddy thing or you know fixing some kind of plasticiness. I think while it's still kind of present, I didn't find it to be exactly an issue because the character is really dark and creepy as he is. Just changing the gradients of the values and everything, that was enough in itself to make it not exactly look plasticky and just look very grim. Like it's not perfect, but I felt like this, uh, this style of shading actually works pretty well. And the main issue was really about applying values with proper details and gradients. That's really what improved the picture. And also I changed the gradients in the background a bit to highlight the silhouette of the character a bit more. I think it's improved things quite a lot. Next patient, Kulin Malkimus. Hi, Kulin. Hey, Boro. First time posting for Overpaint. Thank you for joining. This is my most recent painting of one of my characters from an online game who is, apparently, a reincarnated goddess. There are things that I can see in the painting that I should probably change, like bringing their right hand up from behind the horse's neck, so it doesn't look like I just didn't want to paint hands. So you were talking about that hand behind the neck, I just realized that. I thought you were talking about this hand. This looks a bit more weird. That looks just about fine, I think. But I want to know if there's anything you would change about the lighting, the composition, environment, etc. I'm still comparatively new to painting environments, lighting and people, which is where I hope you can help me. So yeah, let's see what happens. The picture is really awesome as is, but maybe I can improve something. Yeah, wow, this one is just so cool. I really like this picture. It's almost perfect. I really like the way the character looks. They're just so cool. When I zoom in, it's just, I wouldn't want to change much at all. And you mentioned that the arm, it feels like you're hiding. Or maybe it's you were talking about this one, because this one does feel like you were avoiding it, so you just wouldn't have to draw an arm. <laughs> yeah, maybe this I would change, right? But like, I would probably put it right here, maybe. But that kind of makes it look a bit, you know, when the character puts their hands together, they're kind of docile or whatever, like nice or maybe um, feeling uncomfortable, not dominant and the, this character right here really has a different mood. So pretty much I'll just bring the, the hand forward. I don't know if it's supposed to be in a glove, probably is, but I'll just go ahead and do the simple hand like that. Another one thing that I would want to fix, the way the stone hand thing is located and is intersecting with a horse. When I zoom out, I really just, I can't see the horse. It's so unpleasant how this is just blending in with the stone. So since we're having this fog, I would probably uh, cover the stone with a uh, more fog in there. That would be like a quick fix for this situation. We can do it uh, in the whole painterly context of just adding a lot more aerial perspective just around the whole character so it would look a bit more like just highlighting the outline of the whole thing. But another thing I thought about, what if this stone structure would be uh, kind of more like this? So this way it would work much better, it would like talk 
to the to the character I guess although they would be kind of parallel and also I don't know if uh, if it's necessary for the stones to be exactly like in front of this tree if this is the actual location from the game then rotating the whole thing if the, the stones would be like that then the tree would be over there and the whole composition would kind of fall apart because of that that wouldn't be ideal but yeah that's something I would probably try doing like in terms of just rotating the so this is really still bothering me quite a lot but yeah again uh, working more on just how to implement this aerial perspective or specifically the fog cloud it could really work well it's just that it needs uh, more justification by adding more fog in other areas we don't necessarily want to turn it into silent hill or anything but I'll probably keep it like that, it's just I'm gonna make a better case out of this fog. And one more thing, I feel like the grass area, like especially closer to us, we need a bit more distinct, you know, actual grass going on. It feels like it's getting pretty close to the camera or something, yet we don't see any grass truly showing up at all. So I'll try to introduce some of that to feel some better perspective you already have like the these flowers being bigger than the ones over there but that's like literally the only thing that's really changing so I'll probably work on that a little bit and yeah I don't know overall this picture is just really really good so after working on it for a little bit I got these changes so we have our aerial perspective we have more definitive grass at the bottom close to the camera and especially I like the way it's showing up next to the horse's legs because before it really felt like the legs disappear in some kind of green sea or fog and with this extra definition and some kind of shadow from the horse on this grass it's really placing it in this world a bit better so yeah I worked on the arm added some shading lit the boot for from the top uh, added some shadows from the hand in here and yeah whatever I felt like would improve the shading a little bit but generally everything looked just fine and that was about it the only thing I added afterwards was actually increasing the dynamic range of the picture altogether because while this is a dark scene our eyes would adjust to it anyway there's no reason to specifically make the whole picture dark it had a pretty low dynamic range so I increased it and I think the picture still looks as dark as it used to. I tried to also desaturate the, the clouds a little bit after I brought them brighter, but maybe I could do it a little bit more as well to not introduce, you know, more saturation. But overall, I think this is a good improvement. It doesn't change the story. It just makes the picture be more visible, you know? Uh, it's almost like just making the screen brighter. Next patient. Low star. Hello, low star. Hello, borrow. One thing that keeps nagging at me is how you've consistently commented about my brushwork, how it should or could be more precise. I suppose I'm wondering where acceptable painterly abstraction becomes unacceptable and precise brushwork. <laughs> I read this sentence many times. I'm not exactly sure what you meant, low star. <laughs> okay, I'm wondering where acceptable painterly abstraction becomes unacceptable imprecise brushwork. Now I got it. I think you did almost perfect job with the brushwork in this artwork, so there you go. This is my last commission piece. A tifling bard in transition of becoming the newish subclass a spirit bard. It's from the Dungeon and Dragons universe. I see. You and your work and art is ever appreciated. I've been hoping to buy some prints now that I'm more financially stable. Do you have prints sold anywhere? I do have just a few on Redbubble or Teespring, but more on that sometime soon. Now let's see what I managed to do to improve this awesome looking portrait right here. All right, Lowstar, I gotta say the brushwork this time is actually pretty good. Overall, I find this portrait really fortunate. I'm not sure though, um, there's like certain lighting going on, the blue one on the right side, the 
purple on the left side. At first I thought it's coming from the horns, but right now I realize both horns are blue. So it's the light that's coming from somewhere else or whatever, it's like the uh, red eye on the on this side and the blue eye on this side. So yeah, it's just lit like that just for kicks. I can see that now and that's cool and in that regard I really find this black outline of the nose a bit confusing I guess no matter where the light source is coming from as you did really well in here this is pretty much a rim light on that uh, nose bridge why not continue that on the actual nose and get rid of the of this annoying cartoonish outline so that would be a thing also i would you know try to experiment a little bit with the actual introducing the terminator although that probably not going to be a good idea since the light sources are not perfectly excluding each other they're sort of both from the front so they're overlapping so not exactly gonna have a sharp black line between them so yeah doing something like that i'll try to make it actually work because that's requiring some work on replacing that uh, i think overall in here the values shouldn't go away so strongly maybe like in here we have the this cheekbone thing maybe it makes sense to make it like that a little bit in here as well and then yeah going away a bit quicker at the very edge of the face so I'll be doing something like that. I think we can reach a very good looking render if we fix the values in here, you know, not going into strong of a gradients in there. It seems to work much nicer. Same thing in here, maybe. But yeah, aside from that, it's pretty damn good artwork. If we would be talking about what else to improve, I would uh, probably work on the detail of this braid right here. And the hair, wherever there's this high contrast lighting, remember I say it frequently that whenever there's a high contrast of lighting, especially a Terminator, it needs to be like paid a bit more attention to because that's immediately what the eye is looking at. So just showing some texture of, well texture, I mean the, yeah it's a texture a texture of hairs you know showing a bit more of that elaborate shape I think it will really pay off because a lot of people will notice this so in the end I got just a few changes on the face mostly the values and some details on the hair and it looks like this so yeah I made a bit softer gradients on the lighting because since we're not really lighting up the cheek from here, we should kind of choose either it's from here or from here. So I chose to go this route. So the light source is somewhat like here. And on that side as well, it was pretty easy to get rid of the outlines. But I don't know, it almost felt like it was intentional that you kept them. So I don't know. And yeah, uh, I think this part, this hair, while obviously this was supposed to be like a painterly quicker, well not quicker, it's actually pretty elaborate and well thought through artwork, but generally like with expressive brushwork, still certain areas of high contrast, they really can use a bit more detail. And I think that's about it here. Next patient, Astral Fox Art. Hi there, Fox. I'm gonna call you Fox if you don't mind. Hello there, Boro. Thank you for uploading so many helpful videos. Thank you for watching. I usually paint landscapes, but I really wanted to try drawing humans more. Every time I paint humans, they look a bit off. I can sense it when I mirror the image. I particularly, I particularly struggle with hair, drawing too many hair strands with shadows, and making skin more lively. I'm a bit colorblind, so I tend to overdo one color too much, like green or red. Yeah, I don't know, I, I kind of like the color scheme of this picture, so you're doing alright. I mean, it's pretty green-red as I think of it. The anatomy might be off as well, I still struggle with face shape and proportions. The woman on the picture is on Windy Road. She was supposed to be smiling slightly, but she's looking more surprised, and I can't fix that properly. Well, this artwork turned out to be pretty interesting to me, so let's see how that went. Alright Fox, I gotta say, I actually really like the hair as it is, you mentioned you were struggling with that a lot, but I actually kinda really like the style or just, I don't know, aesthetically it's really cool looking, it's not realistic, it's a different style, but I like it a lot. But 
obviously if you came to me you probably want to push for more of a I know realistic look or something so let's uh, go ahead and try to do just that um, but also the anatomy of the face and really the values is like the main issue in here but those two things are connected quite a lot so um, one thing I actually find very interesting about this image you actually have a very well-defined direction of the light I can see it's going like this maybe a little bit from the front like that you can tell it by many signs in here the only thing is not everything is truly following that but only because you probably have little experience with actually working with proper values by values i mean analyzing where each plane of the geometry is facing and therefore either making it brighter like the nose for instance the nose is something that sticks forward quite a lot so it's usually the brightest part in the face also the forehead but when we have hair obviously it's not a thing uh, generally of course I would go ahead and just reconstruct the face as I did with um, with a superhero warrior submission earlier today but we can go ahead and actually just discuss some of the things to fix um, I would fix in here like with the help of this values work I can define that the nose bridge area is is this nose bridge I'm not quite sure the area exactly between the eyes on top of the nose this part it falls inwards so there's a concave curvature and you must show it with a shadow otherwise a person without this uh, bridge if that's its real name uh, that that's gonna be exactly uh, the place that will make the character look really really weird <laughs> then yeah the cheeks the upper part of the cheeks is usually also facing upwards so i'm gonna light up that part as well and in here we usually get uh, this a little bit lit up so the sun i assume this is the sunlight right we can see rather sharp shadows so you're probably going for the actual sunlight so i'll just add this little thingy right here that always happens that's uh, the shadow from this part casting like that on the cheek and then it's of course really quickly going away so i'll be doing a lot more of that the face has a lot of parts sticking out like this and with just doing that we are already bringing the face a lot closer to something that you probably had in mind the shape of the eyes like the um usually the um, corners of an eye they don't actually go like upwards or something like th they should usually be horizontal as far as i know at least uh, this eye actually almost has it while this eye is really going up a lot so i'm gonna fix that symmetry in here and of course uh, I'll keep working on those values and yeah with the with the hair same as with everything else that's just your main issue it's not the issue with uh, just the portraits although of course probably like uh, some proportions some decisions on the eyes and uh, maybe other stuff like the nose is also not exactly perfect geometry or whatever but of course you can just use some photos to study how faces look because why not you gotta take a look to get a better shot at that you can also use portrait photos to study portraits and also studying the values seeing how things change their brightnesses because the different planes are sticking up or down or whatever so that that could be really useful i think you should do that if you're interested in doing more portraits of course but yeah after a while after you study a whole bunch of this stuff um you just memorize you know the way the geometry goes i'm not doing a perfect job in here right now i'm just using some of the stuff that i remember off the top of my head of how the face structure goes and just shading it based on that and yeah moving on to the hair same as everything else on the face same as on the shoulders we also need to work on those values so generally we need to define the planes of facing upwards or downwards that's as important as showing the edges of objects and on the hair we need to approach it the same way we need to break things down into groups or i mean there was some kind of a short uh, short bit of hairs in here as well you can group it a little bit 
in here, this bigger mass, I need to shade it with bigger brush strokes first to show the actual overall mass. And then on top of that, you can go ahead and define smaller little shadows and highlights like that. I'll do a better job in the time lapse, but uh, I'm just showing you the, the logics behind it. And smaller and smaller, you just break things down afterwards and then just adding maybe some stray hairs on top. So don't try to build the shape like you literally were cutting out the silhouette separately and then trying to shade in, trying to show like all the hairs. Uh, it's not the point. The painting, the main thing about painting is that you always group details into bigger blocks. That's all you do, all the time. And whenever you want to show more details, you can just so quickly and easily break down this bigger shape into something smaller, but it comes later. You can decide on that at any moment. So yeah, these are my thoughts. Now I'll actually shut up and pay more attention to what the hell I'm doing here. I'll try to achieve that slightly smiling look instead of the slightly surprised look, and we'll see what happens. So yeah, after working for, I think, over an hour for sure, I got this result. Now, I really like it, but I can't help to regret the fact that I changed the face maybe a bit too much. Like, it's just a different person completely. Uh, here's the middle stage that I, I think this is what I finished at when I stopped talking. So I did a whole lot of changes on the anatomy of the face. They're kind of subtle, but of course the huge changes are about the eyes. By the way, I still forgot to add a bit more shading on the curvature of the eyeballs. So they look a bit too flat like it's almost all right just at the very edges of the curvature mostly here and a little bit in here and in here it needs to shade away a bit because there is a lot of curvature at those parts but yeah aside from that i think i did everything i wanted to do but in the original i really feel like the girl was a lot more i don't know stylish and ready to go hanging out somewhere because she has like not a lot of makeup but pretty noticeable makeup and in my case like definitely a lot less of it or something I don't know and the the girl seems uh, pretty different like a lot more natural looking or something it's just about taste or, or whatever but yeah the facial structure and stuff like that uh, I think what I said was pretty universal but generally you can study painting faces more to do it your way I did it my way next patient Actually, the final patient. Some stupid panda. Hi. Hi. I've been watching for a long time, since your old SCP videos. I'd like to think you've taught me a lot about lighting. Thanks, by the way. Ah, you're welcome. Lots of love from Canada. Oh, Canada, hello. Postscriptum, I hope I did this right. First time using Patreon. You did great. Double postscriptum. I guess I should give some info on what this actually is. This is my original character, Kara. She's a physician in the Knights Hospitaller. She's walking back to the city with her sling staff for lobbing rocks at bad guys. That's about it. LOL. So this is a very nice and soft looking artwork. I really like it. So let's see what I managed to do with it. All right, Panda. So honestly, this picture, I almost like it as it is without any changes. Couple of things, like I'm not gonna be changing the art style or anything. Maybe I'll uh, make the shading a bit more rich, for instance, and maybe add more details in the shading. But generally, like, uh, oh, this, this arm is a bit weird, so I'm gonna probably change this. Overall, the style is really great. Uh, I wanted to focus on one important thing here is um, the environment and how it has a very different approach in different parts. I really like the way you did the ground. The ground looks really good. It's uh, well, it's not super high detail or anything, but it doesn't have to be. But it has this brushwork where you truly approach all the details, you group them together into this very artsy brushwork. But then you add the grass that looks like this, or uh, these uh, bushes of uh, whatever it would be in this place. But uh, yeah, like very sharp sticks. And then these leaves are probably made with like a separate leaf brush 
And I think you should approach these details the same way you were approaching the ground. So when you're painting a ground like this, while this is a solid surface, that's just having a continuous surface, right? It's just like one object in a way. But in reality, there's so many different things. Like if you look at a sharp photo of a ground, it would have, you know, little stones, maybe sticks, maybe, uh, I don't know, cigarette butts or whatever, <laughs> some sand or whatever, all kinds of stuff would be going on. But you combine all of them, you group all of them into these sort of like clean brush strokes. Uh, they they imply that there's more detail in there that's lighter, but overall it's blended together with the color of the ground as well. But the same thing can be done in here and in here. Even though they don't form uh, like a consistent surface the way we have in here, this still can be blended together in brush strokes all the same. This kind of blending of all the details together. So you wouldn't have to switch to a suddenly incredibly sharp sharp and smaller brushwork or like the brush itself would be so different. It looks really weird and especially like it's introducing this incredible high contrast in the areas that really don't need that, you know, uh, these parts, they're not important, they can be much softer with a much more subtle approach with the details. And yeah, instead of painting it like this, you can be just doing this kind of approach and having semi-transparent brush strokes and erasing back and forth like this. This will allow you to introduce a much greater density of these bushes or whatever it would be. But uh, still it would fit in with the initial brushwork of, of the ground, which I think should be the, the reference for the brushwork in this case. Like the character is painted differently, but I think that's kind of uh, reasonable in this case. Of course, uh, this kind of approach, if you would apply it to the whole character, that would be awesome. Just with a bit of a higher detail here and there. When you paint like this, like everything, it's so much easier to add more details on top of it to make it look incredibly detailed. I talked a lot about this in the video called learn how to paint before you learn how to paint something. So you can check it out. There's more to it in that video, but this was an important part of it as well. And this is the kind of stuff that many artists miss out on the appreciation and a good practice in how to just visualize anything with the same brushwork. So this artsy brushwork can be applied to everything and that's when you'll get a good high quality consistent painting. So that's my thought on that. I'll work on that a bit more in the time lapse. Another thing I wanted to talk about is the this metal uh, chest armor, I think that's what it is. Like this definitely hints that this is supposed to be a reflection. So it's reflecting the horizon somewhere. Well, I'm gonna try and push it further. One thing that we should start with here is adding contact reflections, reflections of things that are the closest to the object, like maybe even touching it. So if you'll add a little bit of this and a little bit of that, yeah, one thing that's really important to realize when you create reflections on a round object is that it's actually going to be really squished. So the overall shape of this arm, it would be like, like, like that tops because it's like really squished. We're seeing a lot of angles reflected by this thing. So uh, everything that's happening in this small angle part, it will be just this little area. And that's why maybe if you tried drawing this reflection of this arm, it probably looked really weird because it was too long, most likely. This as a contact shadow and also as um, a reflection, like it, it, there are two reasons to add much stronger presence of these details of this outfit right here. And maybe like add a little bit of that red somewhere. And yeah, starting with that, then I can connect that, you know, reflection of that far fetched horizon thing a lot more and it will look very much appropriate. I don't think we need to fade away the sky in here because it's not going anywhere at the top. I hope. 
And at the bottom, we'll get some of that reflection of the grass. But uh, the more distant objects are, the fuzzier they should get the way I did in here. Because like, even if it's uh, a shiny armor with like completely chrome looking thing. Like, first of all, I, I think they couldn't make like pure chrome reflective type of metal back then. Maybe they could, but it feels a bit inappropriate to make like perfect chrome. So it's probably supposed to be a bit softer than that. And because of that, the reflection generally, the further it gets, and here we get kind of a pretty sharp detail, but the moment it goes further away, it's kind of disappearing, and that's totally the way it's supposed to go. Oh yeah, look at that, it really looks like some kind of reflection truly going on in there. And I think this is uh, the good starting point for its success as this effect, so it would really look correct. So yeah, since uh, I'm looking at it like since we have a pretty decent sharpness of the very horizon, uh, we should probably define the arm a bit more. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. This is like a cloth fold. Oh no, it's a little border. So yeah, the this uh, chest armor, it ends with this kind of curvature, but it, it should be like consistent everywhere, I suppose. So yeah, that reflection, it should happen at least earlier or something. So like this, because of this curvature happening in here, uh, the colors need to start later, because this is facing upwards and only this is facing the arm. So yeah, there we go. These are my main things that I wanted to focus for this submission. Another little tweak also, I, I was thinking about it before, but adding a little bit of the Fresnel reflection on the coat, since it's very, uh, it's not a coat, but I forgot the word. Since it's uh, like a solid color and nothing really happening on it all that much, so it's a big round object and it's really dark too. It needs to show the Fresnel reflection. So whenever it's curving away at the edges, it needs to start reflecting that sky color. So by adding that with uh, like a good brushwork, you add a lot more definition and just interesting detail and a beautiful Fresnel effect to something that was kind of really blank before. And now you get to visualize this rich uh, rendering just because you're adding reflections on the edges. So yeah, after working a bit more with the values, some details and the brushwork, rendering the reflections and the hair, I got this. I think this improved the picture quite a lot. And also I think it fit pretty well with the uh, much more of an anime face of the character. So I just added an extra layer and added the sunlight spots on the face. It was a pretty cool trick I did closer to the end adding some much brighter spots on several places in here. Overall, I changed the shading on the legs, making the whole bottom like uh, these bright areas on the legs much darker. So it ended up being much more consistent in terms of the lighting from the top. I got uh, the reference for the lighting from this arm, since we had a pretty sharp lighting from the top in here. I just worked from there, introducing a stronger terminator in here, since there's not a lot of clouds and probably it's pretty sunny, so terminators made sense in here. Changed the arm as much as I could. It's probably not perfect, or at least it's pretty fast. But yeah, overall, everywhere the brushwork is a lot more consistent, did a bit more definition on the pine trees right there, and pretty much on everything else. So the result turned out to be pretty fun, I think. I really like the pretty romantic spots of sunlight on the face. I think it works really well with this art style. So yeah, this is it. Nine submissions. I'm all done with the submissions from March. Next Monday, I will try to do the same thing for the whole of April. I hope the amount of submissions will be a bit less insane since I increased the price for overpaying to $25. But with this new format of working on the submissions for several days and then making this kind of editing where I just switch back in time, I can really work with more submissions. But of course, it takes more time to work on this kind of episodes. But nonetheless, if you guys want me to overpaint any of your pictures uh, this way, feel free to visit the link to my Patreon page in 
in the end of this video. And yeah, you become my patron in the Overpaint tier and submit your artwork with the message. I read the message and overpaint the picture. But now I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Ah, now to decide what will be the thumbnail for this video. It's always the hardest part.